what is the main message that you try to share through this existential psychology? Like, I, I guess, help us understand what it is and the main lessons. What is the point, I guess? I think it's about <laughs> not shying away from really hard questions and from hard realities and truths in life. It's encouraging people to feel empowered and autonomous and free to really get in there and try to figure it out. It's less about teaching people how to live the quote unquote right way and more about saying you have the power to create the life that you want and you're responsible to create this life. You're responsible for the way you choose to show up in the world. Of course, we all have restrictions and constraints and we all have things that are imposed on us. But then what? What are you going to do then? And I think it's kind of, I find it a very empowering sort of modality because it's really focused on the power that remains within you, the freedom that you have. And I think responsibility, you know, changed and saved my life in a way. And so I'm hoping that it will do the same for my clients of like, yeah, why are you here? And who are you? Like These really big existential questions. I think sometimes we avoid them and we often deal with the manifestations of not knowing those answers. So being in crappy relationships and not knowing how to set boundaries and having negative self-talk. And um, most of the time we try to target those behaviors. And what I like about existentialism, it kind of goes, okay, yes, of course we should, we should, you know, pay attention to these behaviors, but where are they really coming from? And are there deeper questions um, that are kind of manifesting this way? It's so interesting to hear you talk about it because I feel like I've been you know, asking these same questions in my life and I've been learning these things, but I've never, you, I, I didn't know it belonged to this field of existential psychology, right? Like the, why am I here? The taking responsibility for your life. I would love to take credit for it, for existentialism, but obviously this is a very universal human condition. So I think everyone talks thinks about this, but I think what's unique about existentialism is that it does target common human experiences and it really focuses on those. And so um, I don't think you have to be an existentialist to ask these questions, but I think we all ask them and that's good to know. It's good to put it out there that we're all grappling with these topics. Okay. So let's talk about responsibility, which is one of the concepts you talked about. So tell us how learning about what responsibility, what that means has helped you make a positive change in your life? So for me, responsibility is an interesting concept because you can't be responsible if you're not free. So it means like if you had no, no freedom of choice in a particular context, like you couldn't choose to do that or not do that, then you're not re really responsible for that option. But if you had the freedom to choose and you chose wrong or you made a mistake, then you are responsible for it. And I like it because I started to see this connection between freedom and responsibility, which changed my attitude towards responsibility. I used to be like, it's blame. <laughs> it's shaming me. It's blaming me. It's making me like do all these uncomfortable things. I don't want it. I don't think anyone else wants it. But then I started to realize like, wow, when I feel the weight of responsibility, I need to really understand how much freedom I have and how empowering and liberating that is. And when you take responsibility for your life, it, it means that you're way more intentional about the way you live it because you don't want to make that mistake and then have to own up to it. You don't want to have those apologies. You don't want to have to. And you start to take your decisions more seriously. And you realize that like you have so much power in creating who you become. And that's really cool, but also really scary. And so for me, it was for the first time being like, wow, cool. I'm this thing that I can mold and I need to be really careful and intentional because I need to take responsibility for the way I do it. Now, it doesn't mean I won't make mistakes because of course everyone makes mistakes, but it made me take life very seriously, it made me take decision-making very seriously from like the smallest things of like, I have a really big day. Will I have a matcha? Will I have tea or will I have coffee? Now, this seems like pretty silly, but it's not because I know that my nervous system reacts very differently to all three. So if I want to be anxious the whole day, nervous about what people think about me, if I want to have my entire conversations sort of a colored through anxiety, then yeah, I should have a cup of coffee before I start my day. But if I don't want that, then I should probably have tea or matcha. And so for me, I started to notice how every decision I needed to take responsibility for and how much it impacted my life and the outcome of like every day. 
Yeah. That's amazing. I I think we also need to, I guess, highlight what it looks like to not take responsibility. Because I think <laughs> responsibility is like an odd concept to some people who, you know, I don't think people realize that they're not taking responsibility in their lives in certain areas, right? Like there's a lot of areas in life where we think we're the victim or we blame other circumstances or whatever. So give us an example of what that looks like. For sure. So in my book, I talk about this character called Chad. He's a made up, made up dude. And Chad is like 32. Let's, let's say he's 32. And he is mistreating every single partner he has. He's avoidant. He never commits. He cheats on them or he hurts them in some way. And this is his pattern. And now you find out that Chad, when he was in high school, had a really traumatic event. So his parents got divorced and it was really messy. And that was really, really difficult for him. Or for example, his first girlfriend in college cheated on him. And then you go, okay, Chad, these experiences explain why you might have the tendency to protect yourself and be avoidant and lash out and do the self-sabotage, but they do not justify. At what point does Chad need to become responsible for the way that he treats other people? And that is really the responsibility piece of like, you are hurting yourself, you're hurting those around you, and you are not really doing anything about it. And you're maybe blaming things in the past that of course impacted you. But at some point at 32, you have to understand that there's been a decade in which you could have taken responsibility for your healing, seeing a therapist, (laughs) talking to your parents about it, your ex-girlfriend about it, and just really processing it and changing your behavior. And often I'll have people say, well, Of course, Chad should change so that he treats his girlfriends better. And I always go, actually, no, that's not why Chad should change, although that's a nice outcome. Um, The girlfriends that choose to date Chad while he's behaving that way, that's their responsibility. (laughs) The reason that Chad should change is because he deserves to have a fulfilling life. And until Chad takes responsibility... He's not going to. He's not going to have the relationships he truly yearns for. He's not going to have the healing that he wants and deserves as a human being. And so I think that that's an interesting thing of like, to live your best life, you kind of need that responsibility. Yeah. Oh my God. Thanks for sharing that example. Cause it's so, it just makes this concept so much easier to understand. And then it also, I love the distinction of yes, someone's pain and trauma explains why they are a certain way, but it doesn't justify it. I think that's totally. like highlight that because <laughs> a lot of people, especially if you're like a forgiving person, you might like forgive people too easily who make these mistakes because you're like, oh, I understand why he did that or why he's that way or why he has these issues. What is your take on being, I I guess, that side as well? It is that other person's responsibility whether or not they accept that behavior, right? Yeah, I do think so. Look, I'm not saying that someone screws up and you cut them off. I think that's pretty extreme. In that case, we would all be alone forever because we all screw up (laughs) to an extent. But I think for me, there's a difference between um, choosing to be in an intimate relationship with someone who is clearly unable or unwilling to have that sort of intimacy or connection or someone that keeps hurting me. I also think that there's, you know, um, a difference between forgiving a behavior that came up once versus a pattern. And ultimately, you can want the best for someone. You you can love someone and still choose not to be with them because your responsibility is for you. And um, that sounds a little harsh sometimes, especially when someone is really trying. But for me, I think you know, it's hard, even as a therapist, I'm super empathetic. (laughs) And then you have to be like, okay, well, is this person really trying to change? Because apologies come with changed behavior. And unless there is a changed behavior that comes with the words, it's really kind of um, disrespectful to yourself to keep staying in patterns that hurt you. So I would say that staying with someone who's constantly hurting you, obviously, this gets very convoluted with abuse and, 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 trauma bonding and all this stuff. But let's just say that you don't have an abusive relationship and it's not trauma bonding. It's just like a guy from Tinder that's mistreating you. Um, I think it's, it's important to realize that that's, we get mad at him, but really a lot of that is also on us. The fact that we're saying like, I think it's equal distribution of responsibility. Yeah. 
Another aspect of responsibility that I want to touch on is this concept of like what you are, what you can be responsible for, and then what you cannot. Like, for example, like you can't be responsible for other people's feelings. It, it, oh, it, it's such extremes. There's people that are like, I can say and do anything and I'm not responsible for your feelings. You should be responsible for your feelings. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, I get you, buddy. But like you evoked those feelings. So fine, you're not responsible for them having them if you, if you want to do that mental gymnastics, but you are responsible for the actions that evoked those feelings. <laughs> so I don't like the full, like, I'm not responsible at all. The fact I yell, yelled at you and now you're right. crying, like your feelings are yours. And it's like, no, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so I, I think that gets taken to like an extreme. And then there's also individuals who really struggle and they take everyone's responsibility on themselves, which ironically is irresponsible. <laughs> Oh, and explain why. Because I think a lot of my audience and myself lean towards that that part, right? The one where you're the people pleaser, trying to make everyone happy. <laughs> yeah, so do I. So I, I totally get it. I think we think we're being so extra responsible when we take everything on. And in reality, we are not being responsible to the person we are, to the self-care that we deserve, to the boundaries that we deserve. We're actually not taking care of ourselves when we do that which means you're not taking full responsibility for yourself. And you're also not really helping the person who's not taking responsibility. It's kind of enabling them to go through life without realizing the consequences of their actions or whatever it is. And so it comes from like a super genuine, sweet, empathetic space. It also comes a bit usually from fear of like wanting to belong and wanting to to be loved and wanting to be low maintenance and wanting to do all these things, which, which come, you know, and I, and I think you shouldn't fault your motivation. I just think there's a healthier way to do that. And so my suggestion is like, if you're doing everything and everything's your responsibility, it really boils down to you not being responsible for you because you're taking way too much on and it's so unfair. Yeah. Ultimately remember the priority should be like you and your well being, right? Absolutely. And then the rest follows. 